All right, y'all, let's get right into this. First of all, I did my nails. Aren't they cute? Aren't they cute? If you see me looking over to the right, it's because my monitor's right there and I'm trying to make sure y'all can see me, okay? I'm going to start off with my Ebony Brow Wiz from ABH. Tonight, I'm going to be on Instagram Live with Mahogany D. She's on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Tonight, we're going to be on Instagram Live, and we're going to be talking about the movie Not Okay. That's the name of the movie. If you don't want to hear no spoilers, you probably shouldn't watch this video because I'm going to talk very openly about this movie. All right. So the movie is about a girl who is depressed. She is so depressed that she's on, um, I think she's on antidepressants if I'm not mistaken. Works for either a digital magazine or a marketing agency called Depravity. Moral corruption, wickedness. Oh wow, that's interesting. <laughs> that's really interesting. So the company that she works for is called Depravity and she works as a, a photo editor, right? Which to me is really cool because that if anything is really really crucial nowadays she wants to be a writer right not really sure why she wants to be a writer other than the fact that it's kind of obvious that she wants to be heard and listened to her boss is like girl you're not a writer don't be trying to write like do your job um she has somebody in her life who does kind of pay attention to her which his name is kelvin which I think that that's like a, a measurement for... Anyway, his name is Kelvin, and he obviously pays attention to her and might even actually like her. But, you know, she gives him no time of day, which is like very ironic. So she has a crush on this influencer dude, and his name is Colin. <laughs> Y'all, I'm not going to say too much about Colin, but he is lame, okay? He is lame. He gets a lot of attention and she likes that about him. She runs into him on the street and she chats with him a little bit. She smokes with him, which girl, what are you doing? Cause she doesn't smoke. She smokes with him and then she lies y'all. She tells a lie, right? And in the lie, she basically tells him that she's going on this like writer's retreat or whatever. And he's like, oh, a retreat, you know, cause that's what some influencers do if you have enough followers and enough engagement companies will pay for you to go on trips now these trips are not vacations like you actually have to do work on them and i don't think people realize that like you have to the expectation is that you're going to be advertising the brand and you're essentially getting educated on the company the pro their products and how they function you know in terms of what they're producing right so child she says that she's going on a writer's retreat and he doesn't really care he's one of those stereotypical influencers but he's just like okay good luck you know have fun whatever right so she goes home she starts to feed into this lie for herself meaning you know she's like oh my god I told this guy I'm going to be gone for two weeks, which means I can't show up to work tomorrow. He'll be there and he'll know that I've, I lied about going on this trip. She starts feeding this lie to herself by telling everyone else that that's what she's going to do. She calls her parents. Yeah, I'm going on a writer's retreat. It's totally real. It's not a scam. The people in her life don't believe her because she's not a writer. She doesn't have any published work or anything like that. She's a photo editor. And quite frankly, she's pretty good at it, you know, just based off of the what she did in the movie, right? So anyway, she lies to everyone and tells them that she's going to Paris because ooh wee wee. So let me get this concealer. I'm going to take, I'm gonna do my, my oldie but goodie as they used to say. Look. So her photoshopping these pictures and editing them and basically saying that she was in Paris, it just shed light on the fact that a lot of what we see is misleading and it's left up for your interpretation. So mind you, she was posting all this stuff, right? She didn't have any followers. She still had the same amount of followers while she was posting that she was in Paris. So she wakes up one day after all of this lying and finds out that there was a terrorist attack in Paris okay at a couple of different locations and one of those locations 
One of those locations is where she made a Photoshop picture, right? <laughs> Just dumb. She posted the picture moments before the terrorist attack. And so, much like people do on the internet, they think that what you're posting and sharing is exactly what you're doing at that time, right? So everybody's like, oh my god, are you okay? Yada yada with the woo. You know what I'm saying? So her account blows up after the terrorist attack happens. And you might be wondering, well, why would her account blow up? Like, why does it matter? Anytime there is a national event or something terrible happening, people often search the location, whether it's on Google, on Instagram, or anywhere for that matter. They always search the location to see what people are posting, what people are saying. You know, you've obviously got writers um, and the media, you know, who want to do reports on that sort of stuff. So they, they kind of try to find people who are involved, right? victims and the like so her platform blows up people are following her um and then the guy that she likes the really lame influencer named colin sends her a dm and he's like you know are you okay basically i don't know what he said word for word but he was basically like are you okay or whatever and he follows her and she loses her marbles y'all she gets his attention and she decides to carry on the lie, which to me was dumb. First of all, you could have very easily said, hey, y'all, I posted that picture. I mean, if you're going to continue the lie, like be smart about it, right? <laughs> this is why I say lying takes too much effort. But she could have very easily said, yeah, you know, I'm good, you guys. Um, I posted that picture way after I left. You know what I'm saying? That picture was actually from the day before. You know what I'm saying? She could have, she could have did that, but um, just to save herself the trouble. But obviously, she was not thinking ahead because when you're somebody who's, when you're so desperate for attention and you finally start to get it, um, you don't know what to do. You know, you don't know what to do. It is. I'm imagining for her character specifically that it was kind of like an adrenaline rush because not only did she finally get the attention of the guy that she was crushing on but she also was getting attention from tons of people you know and also people that she previously felt like weren't didn't really care about her like that you know what i'm saying including her mom goes to the airport puts on a beret and walks in line with the people coming back from paris I was just wondering how no one was paying attention to the fact that this girl just walked up as if she came off the plane when she did it. You know what I'm saying? All of the media people there. Yeah, my eyebrows are crooked. Y'all see that? All of the, the people from the media there, nobody stopped and said, girl, where where is you coming from? You, you didn't get off the plane. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Obviously, because the media does what the media does, they were at the airport to take pictures of her. And she goes to work, and her boss is like, oh, she's so strong. Everybody cares about her. They're so sorry that she went through that. Her dad is supplementing their lack of relationship with money and talking about, oh, we could have lost her. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have had any more Christmases. She wants to grow her followers. She wants more attention, which is crazy to me because like, how are you not scared about what's going on? How are you not afraid of being found out about? But she was so caught up in her own mess that she was just going with the motions. She goes to a support group for people who've gone through traumatic events to study them. This is where I began personally to just really not like her character. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's, it's just disgusting. What the reality is People do stuff like this all the time, y'all. She was legit at the support group taking notes, y'all. When she's leaving the support group, she first of all, she's rude. But she doesn't care about anyone but herself. Which is really ironic given that she wants all this attention from everybody all the time, right? So when she leaves the support group, she overhears that the little girl, you know, has a bunch of followers. And she quite literally, non-casually just turns around and jumps back on this girl so she can spend time with her and get to know her or whatever little girl is like she's a teenager but you could it looked like the girl was suspicious 
You know what I'm saying? Like her face, she looked at her kind of like, okay, that's weird. Like, weren't you just leaving? Meanwhile, one of the guys from the group is trying to like introduce himself because he was talking to the girl. He, she literally just ran up to her and was just like, hey, she's totally ignoring this guy. It's just, it's just so much is showing about her character, like what kind of person she is, you know? And there's a lot of things that are backwards about her. Like you want all this attention, but you don't care about nobody else. She writes something for her company and it goes viral. She gets celebrated for that. She gets to go on TV shows or whatever. And she winds up going to a rally with this girl. And she sees firsthand the girl's PTSD because people who are against what the girl is rallying about decide to throw like firecrackers. They threw firecrackers and the girl's PTSD just went. She just, she couldn't function. She froze, she choked up and she fell out because she just could not function, which is reasonable. Like you have gun trauma. You. It's too much, right? Uh, by the way, the character's name is Danny. There's moments in the movie where Danny's conscience is bothering her because she's doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? But it's very evident that she's definitely somewhat of a narcissist, and it's just it's very ironic because she get, she pays no mind to the people who actually want to get to know her and pay attention to her. She uses those people. Back to her and this guy calling girl. Her and Co Colin invites her to an influencer event, and when I tell y'all, I was so dead, okay? I was so dead about this influencer event. There was, I mean, obviously it was a little exaggerated to a degree, but not too much. I've only been to three influencer events, and um, none of the ones that I went to were like this movie, thank God. But at the same time, there was some truth to it. Like you, you show up, it looks like a club, you know, depending on who you're associating with or who the company is hosting the event, it's very flashy. There's sometimes liquor involved, depending on the company. It's just everybody taking pictures and showing off and being very much taboo to a degree. Like when the lady, the marketing lady hosting the event was like, oh, put the beret on her. Like, why do you need to wear the beret? That's not cute <laughs> for you to keep wearing this beret in the media. Like, you're first of all, you're not French. You're not from Paris. Um, second of all, it's not symbolic of anything specific. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's just tone deaf is what Damien was calling it. He kept saying she was like super tone deaf. So she finally gets her way and she gets to hook up with, you know, this influencer dude. And it's not cute. It's not cute. It's not cute at all. I'm gonna just leave it at that. It was a hot mess. And if you watch the movie, feel free to elaborate in the comments how not cute her getting a hook up with this guy was. She was utterly disappointed. She skipped out on going to play, I think it was like softball or something with the support group so she could go to this influencer event. She wound up going and she walked there <laughs> in her little outfit that she had on that she hooked up with this lame influencer dude in the bathroom, y'all. They hooked up in the bathroom, it's nasty. I feel like the writers did a really good job at tugging tugging back and forth at your heartstrings with Danny as a character because it's like just like when anyone else does something wrong you know if you have a heart if you can sympathize with someone you know one minute you might be upset with them but then you feel bad because it's like this is a human being this is a regular person you know they experience up and downs ups and downs just like everyone else you know but then they turn around and they do the kind of stuff that she does so like she went to this rally the teenage um gun violence victim which we call it she even gives a speech about the girl's sister and how the girl's sister would be here if it wasn't for gun violence some combative protesters that are against the rally start throwing firecrackers and the young girl's PTSD obviously does what it does and she can no longer give a speech at the rally. So she gets dragged on the internet, you know, and Danny, being who she is, she hasn't faced any backlash for the lie that she's told yet. So she sees all of what's being said about this young girl and her conscience starts to get onto her. Like, are you dumb? Like, look at what you're doing. Look at what you're a part of. This girl is actually 
fighting for something and going through something so much that she had a PTSD attack and you out here both face lying, getting away with it, not facing any uh not facing anything whatsoever. You know what I mean? You're not going through anything whatsoever for the lie that you're telling besides hooking up with that dude in the bathroom and that was nasty. Uh, you're, you're not going through anything. This girl is going through so much. She is being dragged on the internet. And she also feels bad for having PTSD. So Because she can't make her point in her opinion. She's freaking out at the hospital. Because she's like, oh my god, like this girl's going through it. My conscience is bothering me. Yada yada woo woo. And she goes into the girl's hospital room. The young girl is just like, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you... You know, you manage being on the internet or what have you. You know, she's like, I'm so weak. I can't believe that, you know, I let those firecrackers get to me. And then Danny is consoling her or whatever. And she says, it's like you said, the internet likes to turn villains into victims. And y'all, first of all, she quoted the girl wrong because the girl said, the internet likes to turn victims into villains. I found it ironic that she quoted her incorrectly because Number one, it just goes to show that you were not listening. Number two, it foreshadows your conscience. You obviously feel guilty about all of the lies that you've been telling because you twisted her words. You, you twisted them and mistook her words, right? And then also on top of that, it's kind of like insight into the mind of people who get canceled. <laughs> insight into their minds because they want to be forgiven not because they feel guilty they want to be forgiven because they want to get back to what they had they want to get back to being popular get back to getting their attention get back to having fans get back to receiving praise a lot of them truly don't care and don't fully understand what it means to be remorseful once you get put on a pedestal by people and you allow yourself to be put on a pedestal it's really hard to come down uh, as people are throwing rocks and tomatoes at you. Okay, you, you're still on that pedestal, but it has a different title at this point. <laughs> anyway, she freaks out because she keeps seeing this guy, which I didn't mention. Her conscience is a visualization of what the news media reported could have been the alleged terrorist. So this guy keeps showing up everywhere she goes whenever her conscience is clocking her and he's counting to six, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's counting to six. Uh, I could be wrong though, correct me if I'm wrong. If you watch the movie, was he counting to six? He was counting in French, by the way. Okay, I'm gonna have to take me a little pause because I'm trying to figure out what I wanna put on my eyelid. I really like this shade right here. This is called Override, it's from this palette from Urban Decay. What is this called? Their Cyber Palette. But I wanted to put on some glitter. I have some glitter from MAC. I wanted to put on some glitter today. By the way, the colors that I used are from the Omrizi Palette. I need to clean this palette off. 1988 and New Yorker. Basically, that's what I kept building up with. So she leaves the hospital in an uproar because she's like, oh my God, I'm such a terrible person. You know, whatever. <laughs> Not because not that she actually genuinely believes it, right? So she leaves the hospital, she's having a dream, and she's seeing the, the guy again. And let me tell y'all something. At first, I thought she was taking the drug she was taking because she's schizophrenic and depressed. Because I was like, oh no, like the girl is seeing things. She's seeing things, she's imagining things. No, I think she's just depressed, and that was like a um, personification of her conscience that she was feeling and imagining and things. She goes home to her apartment and she has a dream and in the dream, her friend who is the young lady, the young girl, is about to get blown up by the terrorists. And so she's like, oh my God, friend, run, you know? Like, don't go in there, don't do it. And then she chases the terrorist and the terrorist turns around and it's her. If you think about it, it makes complete sense for her to be the terrorist in her mind because she's running around causing problems. And this, you know, quite literally has blown out of proportion. It has blown up out of proportion and she doesn't know what to do. Uh, after her conscience is basically like time has run out, she wakes up to her call box being ran 
or rung. I said ran. Somebody is downstairs. And I haven't mentioned this because obviously you can watch the movie and see all of the details that I'm not talking about. <laughs> but there is a girl in the movie who's essentially her antagonist, you know, for her in her story, in her mind, is her antagonist. And this girl is a writer and she's a lesbian and she is self-righteous and she also thinks that she's better than Danny and she has treated her that way uh, and belittled her in the beginning of the movie. So she comes to her and she's like, I know what you did. I know your secret. I have proof because you were dumb enough to leave your laptop in your office. And I went through your laptop and found Photoshop open. But this means that this girl done had Photoshop open for weeks. <laughs> for weeks. I'm going to take the shade Lily right here. Right here. This is from the um, Anastasia Beverly Hills. What palette is this? The Novu. Novu. Novo. I'm probably saying that wrong. Palette. Ooh, that's pretty, y'all. Y'all see that? That's pretty. Anyway, so this means that this girl done had her Photoshop open for, for weeks. And this is another reason why I say lying takes too much effort. You've had Photoshop open since your lie began. <laughs> and you didn't close it? You didn't think... Let me close Photoshop so that I don't slip up and get caught. You know what I'm saying? You really didn't think that somebody was going to want to unravel your lie. I think I'm going to do this. This is Anastasia from the Amrezi palette. The shade right here. I mean, you didn't think somebody would doubt you. As paranoid as you were. The whole time. And I'm just going to put this up here. Because I like I like putting on a ton of different colors whenever I'm doing a cut crease. Because I got all this space. Mine as well. But yeah, so you didn't think anybody was going to come through and be like, mm, something not right. Something not right. But just like the girl said, she came to her apartment, girl, and she had receipts. But she had receipts, honey. She was like, girl, are you zum? Are you zum? Did you really think you was supposed to get away with this? I am Velma with the Karen haircut, which was very ironic. She had the Karen haircut, self-righteous lesbian lady <laughs> with the Karen haircut. So she gives her an ultimatum, right? She's like, look, um, either you're going to tell everybody that you're a big fat liar or I'm going to do it and I'm going to make a career out of it. Which to me, again, here's another thing. You're coming over here self-righteous. She also admits that she did not like Danny. So you come over here self-righteous. You're doubting this girl to begin with because you don't like her. And then you tell her that you are going to build your career off of her uh, off of her lie and her social destruction, as it were, her getting canceled. Even though, like, it's the writers, again, doing a really good job at pulling at your heartstrings because it's like, dang, I want to feel bad for Danny because it's clear that this girl is, like, she's straight up a hater, bottom line, period. Period. She a hater. I want to feel bad for Danny because of that, because this girl is, her, her motives... Are completely and utterly wrong number one but I also don't feel bad for her because she shouldn't tell the lie to begin with like come on now Danny. Chow, Danny decides to write a blog post and post it she posted it she did not apologize to the young girl uh, she didn't apologize in the blog post so the girl finds out the girl finds out because she starts trending online and people are basically dragging her and Danny saying you know wow like you you basically were bamboozled number one so you're not as smart as you think you are because not only are you dumb for not not wanting gun rights but you're dumb because you're a child and you're dumb for being friends with this liar liar girl right she gets dragged 
and people started calling Danny her protege, which is ironic because Danny is grown. That's another thing. Danny is grown. So the young girl, you know, leaves school <laughs> and she shows up to Jan Danny's job at Depravity and she pops off on her. And you can't hear what they're saying because I guess the glass doors are good enough, you know. You, you just gotta watch the movie. You have to watch the movie. It is the first movie I've seen from a streaming service slash TV service, if you have cable, <laughs> um, in a long time that, that had me shook. Uh, obviously, she don't got no friends no more. People are dragging her. People are telling her she should die. And again, this is the writers pulling at your heartstrings. You know, if you're somebody who can sympathize, you're like, dang, that's pretty messed up. Like, that's harsh. I know she lied, but nobody really knows her backstory. Nobody knows why she lied. Like, she wanted attention because she was depressed uh, and lonely. But then there's also the fact that she's low-key a narcissist. Like, <laughs> there's just so many things, right? And so she has her friends, and she joins an influencer support group for people who got canceled. And um, number one, Damien pointed this out to me. Everyone in the canceled influencer group was white or white passing and he said that was really interesting of them the writers and the producers to do she goes to the support group and this scene specifically i really appreciated her character because she told the truth and the truth was number one she lied and number two she does not know if she actually learned anything from any of this she doesn't know if she's grown she doesn't know if if she's a better person and I really appreciated that because I feel like it takes more than a couple of days to be remorseful. Remorse is a deep regret and a desire to change. You know what I'm saying? People can be sorry. You can be sorry as soon as you do something, you know, because you feel, essentially being sorry is feeling bad. You feel bad for what you did. But being remorseful is totally different. She decides she's going to go apologize to the girl after going to an influencer support group. And <laughs> um, she shows up to a public event, which is not something that you do. If you want to have a conversation with somebody and apologize, you do it in private. Like, you don't show up to an event where they will be basically cornered, right? It's like you're making this about yourself, even though you are allegedly coming here to apologize and, you know, fix things, right? So she shows up to the event. In her notes app, she has a whole speech written, written out, which shows a lack of sincerity. And it also shows that she hasn't learned from this experience. Because, again, you're showing up to a public to, event to apologize. The event's not about you. You're making it about you. And then you have you have to write out your apology, your thoughts. And I understand some people learn that way. Some people communicate that way. That's fine. But when you sincerely apologize from your heart, you don't have to read it off of a piece of paper. Like, this is not second grade. <laughs> so at the event, the girl does her spoken word, and she basically drives Danny. She's like, you're a liar. You lied to me, everybody else. I can't believe, after even getting to know me, that you continue to carry on this lie. You tried to replace my sister. Like, you're an absolutely terrible person. And no matter what, I, oh, oh, and also, you stole my words and you kind of use them against me like you're um in the beginning of the movie the young girl encouraged danny by saying it's okay if you're not okay and danny literally ran with that and blew up because of it um and she's like you used me for for clout and things like that and then at the end of her spoken word she's like no matter what happens like even if i forgive you we'll never be okay and so danny decides to get up and leave at that point after the girl is getting her round of applause and all that jazz she gets up Puts a hood on for her head, which I imagine is symbolic of her finally accepting that she is the villain in her own story, even though she tried to victimize herself by saying, you know, I'm depressed and I'm alone and nobody cares about me. But she never reflected on the fact that you're a narcissist and you don't pay attention to the people who did show interest in you. And, you know, you were sort of a social pick me like you would try to fit in with everybody instead of just being yourself, which is why so many people kind of didn't like you not that they were right for not liking you or mistreating you or isolating you or belittling you but it's like you she needed legit self-reflection so 
that point was the end of the movie and it showed that she accepted that she was the villain in her own story and y'all <sighs> clearly this movie got me shook because i'm running my mouth so much i've literally only done my eyes in like 40 minutes but before this camera dies i am just gonna take some black eyeliner and run it underneath my lash line like that because i realized i didn't put nothing down here okay and then i'm gonna pop on some mascara and for that, I'm going to use the MAC Stack Mascara. And I'll probably do another layer of this um, later. Because the wand itself is it's pretty good, but I think it's better for upper lashes than it is for lower lashes. Because there's more for it to grab onto. So this is the final look, y'all. This is what I'm going to be rocking tonight during my Instagram live with Mahogany. I'm going to be talking about the movie. <laughs> anyway, comment down below and let me know. Do you think clout is relevant? Whether you've seen the movie or not, tell me why you think clout is relevant or not. And um, if you're going to watch the movie, let me know if you're going to watch the movie. If you've already watched the movie, what you thought about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to check and make sure that you are still subscribed to my channel and share this with some homies after you hit that thumbs up button, all right? Because it helps you girl out. I will see y'all in the next video. Peace.